Have you ever dreamt of a game that had all the qualities of Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, Forza 5, and Far Cry all combined into one game? Well, my name is Grenader, and welcome to my Battlefield Hardline in-depth review. I think we hit the mother load. That's 9.9 .9 million dollars worth of coke. Uh, what are you, drug rain man? Come on, let's leave it for the cops. I'm not letting cops take this. Then what are you gonna do with it? We're in Los Angeles. I can unload this in six days. This year, DICE and EA decided it was time to change the formula, yet keep the main ingredients the same. Usually when companies make moves like this in the gaming industry, things go bad and games turn out as failures, with little to no innovation. However, Battlefield Hardline changed the trend and proved to others that change, if done correctly, can make a difference. Battlefield Hardline was originally set to release on October 21st, 2014. However, due to public feedback during the beta, DICE and EA decided to delay the release date to March 17th, 2015. And I'm very glad they delayed the game. Battlefield Hardline quickly became one of my favorite games of all time, therefore yet again proving my theory that if gaming companies needed more time to work on a game, they should delay the game and release when they're ready, rather than shoving out a buggy and defective game just to put the game on store shelves. That not only ruins the game title, but it ruins the trustworthiness of a company. Moving on to the game content itself, Hardline offers a brand new and refreshing campaign that is action packed. The episodes or levels are set up in a way that flows chronologically, rather than past battlefields where the campaign levels skip around the storyline. Now you're probably wondering how the other games I mentioned are incorporated into the game. Well, Hardline mixes Call of Duty's fast-paced gameplay with its own version by slightly reducing map size and creating game modes that naturally create action. Hardline also uses Grand Theft Auto V's Cops vs. Robbers theme with a Battlefield twist to it. Also, the new addition of an improved third-person mode makes driving vehicles in third-person exciting and fun, therefore giving off a Force of 5 feel, because driving through crowds of cops is all too satisfying. Also in the campaign mode, a scanner was added to scan people and check their backgrounds and mark them, similar to the Far Cry 4 camera that marked enemies and displayed information. In addition to the scanner, the actual gameplay is also similar to Far Cry, giving players the option of attacking a group of criminals or quietly taking them out one by one. Nevertheless, the Hardline campaign offers a very interesting storyline with twists and excitement. I don't want to spoil anything, but expect the unexpected. Also something to take notice is that from the moment I picked up the controller, I noticed a difference in the gameplay. The gameplay was very smooth and it felt like the gameplay was fast paced given the fact that I was playing the highest game mode, which I expected the game mode to be slow and dragged out, but I was all too wrong. Now something I think we can all agree on is that DICE and EA usually stuck around the military theme for each and every single one of their games, so therefore Hardline with its new Cops vs Robbers theme suits the game very well and refreshes the series. And not only that, but Hardline also has new and improved game modes. The first game mode is called Heist. Heist is a game mode you're encouraged to play first, as it exhibits Battlefield Hardline's fun at its prime, and it's quite easy to comprehend as well. This mode has robbers go into vaults filled with money to steal, while the cops on the other team will stop by killing the carrier and returning the loot. The police force is given an unlimited number of tickets as the criminals have limited tickets as they strive to steal the loot and meet at the extraction point. Now in my opinion, I believe that Heist is the perfect game mode to play if you've never ever touched a Battlefield game in your life, as this game mode already gives you the objective and most of the people that play Battlefield are very friendly and are very competitive, so you'll probably have a great time playing Heist. The next game mode is called Hotwire. This game mode is similar to the classic Battlefield Conquest we all know and love. However, instead of flags, Hotwire features vehicles you must fight to control and drive around to drain the other team's tickets. In this game mode, sides don't matter as both police enforcement and criminals have the same objective. Hotwire is a great example of a game mode that mixes first person shooters with third person racers, which is I think a very cool thing because you can get into first person, drive around if you'd like, or you can switch over to third person and feel like you're playing a racing game, and all the while shooting people. 
The next game mode is called Blood Money. As it's similar to capture the flag, you must fight control over the bag of cash and return the bag of cash to your team's location. The robbers want the money for themselves, while the cops want the money for evidence. I'm gonna stay 100% truthful in this review and say that Blood Money is my least favorite game mode. I really don't know how to explain it, but I feel that this game mode is similar to past battlefields, the where like the action is there, yet it's not there. It's very slow and dragged out, and the gameplay is not as fast as I'd like it to be. Moving on to the next game mode is Rescue. 99.9% .9 of the Call of Duty community knows this game mode as Search and Destroy. However, this game mode is similar, yet better. Instead of arming and defusing bombs, the cops' objective is to rescue two hostages which are watched over by the robbers. Now personally, I think this game mode is fun and exciting in itself, but not only that, but the Battlefield Hardline community takes the game seriously by calling out and marking out enemies. Plus, you can hear the game chat after players on your team have died, which helps making each round fast paced or long and intense. <laughs> That's what she said. Now moving on to Crosshair, Crosshair is similar to Rescue, but it's unique in its own way. It makes a random player or chosen by a teammate, um, they make them a VIP, and that VIP is to be escorted to the extraction point, which is point A or point B. Now the criminal's job is to stop them at all costs. And now you see how different and yet similar these two game modes are. And before I forget, we all know that game mode, we all know that game mode, we all know it. Come on guys, it's that game mode we all know and love. It is conquest large and small. Conquest yet again makes another appearance and it plays exactly the same and it's for those who've played Battlefield in the past and are used to it or for those who would like to try it out maybe but both teams are fighting to dominate a Battlefield flag by capturing and holding flags for as long as they can. And finally but certainly not least is Team Deathmatch. No objective, just kill. First team to 400 kills wins. This game mode is one of my favorite game modes to play to earn some fast cash. You're spawned randomly in the map so sometimes you're given the upper hand. So to be honest, there's no game mode I hate, but there's certainly my favorite game mode, which would be Rescue. Now let's talk about the cash system in Hardline. You're given the option to balance your money or to spend it all on that gun you've had your eyes on. Money is earned in the game, which helps you buy attachments, weapons, and more. And like I previously stated, Team Deathmatch is probably the best and the fastest way to earn money in Team Deathmatch. As Team Deathmatch is so action-packed, you get an insane amount of kills, therefore boosting your cash balance by $1,000 if you do well enough. So now that you've racked up all that money, it's time to spend it, dude. Now, customization has also been a huge contributing factor to the game's success, as it's very in-depth. You can customize everything from your agent's uniform to the attachments on your weapon, with some custom camos available. Now, something that must be noted is that both criminals and law enforcement have different weapons, therefore giving you four agents you can fully deck out. Now I mentioned that you could get some custom camos, and by that I mean that battle packs are back and just easier to earn. Just forget that they're even in the game and next thing you'll know, you'll have a ton of battle packs. Battle packs are earned by weapon progression and sometimes just randomly thrown at you. Through these battle packs, you can unlock crazy camos, useful items, and in-game boosts. So in summary, Battlefield Hardline is a brand new refreshing game that will take you forever to finish discovering. So if you're looking into buying a new and refreshing first person shooter that will last you a long time and keep you busy, then go get this game. Hardline is nothing unlike its predecessor, so if you've played Battlefield 4, which was a disaster, play this game to completely forget about that horrible game. Battlefield Hardline blows Battlefield 4 out of the water with truly innovative gameplay and was definitely worth the wait. Thank you so much for watching my review, this means a lot to me. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button and leave a comment down below as well with your thoughts. If you'd like to see more reviews like this, leave a comment down below as well. And if you have Battlefield Hardline for the Xbox One and want to play with me, add me on Xbox at Grenader0001. And if you're new to my channel and enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Grenader0001. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.